If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive a review. Positive. Get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. And buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear All listener. Right. Yes, dear listener. <laughs> what? Shout out to I do not consent to monthly charges. <laughs> It always throws me off because he's on our 125 tier. <laughs> he's got that name. Oh, that's his name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. <yeah. laughs> and it's all capitalized, so I always feel like he's like yelling it at me. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you're on Patreon, we're coming to the end of the month, right? Which is when they uh, they do their withdrawal. So if you were thinking about canceling your patronage, do it now. Let us know. I know there's a lot of inflation. If you meant to cancel and and you uh, you got hit on this cycle, don't worry. Send us an email. We'll get you. Uh, we'll get it back to you. We understand people are. Uh, yeah, but don't are, wait because it does. Like Patreon only lets you re refund it for a certain amount of time. So if you realize it, just send us the message. I mean, obviously there's more than one way to skin a cat. Ugh. But um, but yeah, if you get to us sooner, it's easier. Yeah, but obviously I, I don't want you to cancel. But I also I know what happens when you hit a f subscription service. You're like, oh, I'll cancel it. Then you forget. So yeah. it's like the 27th now, guys. So you guys have a couple days. Um, but just want to yep. let you know beforehand. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, this is uh, for all the, the patrons. We do love and adore you. Holy shit. Thank you very much, by the way. We don't thank you guys enough. This next one is uh, apparently there's a guy named Cody Rhodes. He has a theme song. The name of the song is Kingdom.
Hey, I am my kingdom. Well, the name of the song is Kingdom, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Brought to you by DJ Nick, dear listener. Fridays now are brought to you by DJ Nick. You thought that Friday was really about the, you know, Earth rotating around the sun and things of that nature. No, dear listener. Fridays are now brought to you by DJ Nick for the next couple of weeks. You can book it. Okay. <laughs> Having said that, dear listener, what Speaking did you... Of book it, I loved the book it program when I was a kid. Yes, I got so many uh, <laughs> pizzas panned pizzas. Oh, I read a, pizzas I read a book a day. Shout out to the big homie Encyclopedia Brown. That's how I learned how to spell encyclopedia. E-N-C-Y-C-L-O-P-E-D-I-A. <laughs> I could still spell it. Huh? Uh, okay. What did you think? Okay. Um, what did you think the song was about? Let's start that way. I'm, you tell me. Well, I'm, I'm asking you know, what you thought know, it was but about. I, I just feel like I didn't know what the song was about. And I feel like it's probably something that's extremely obvious. And I just didn't really want to be put in that situation. But since you forced me there. <laughs> you didn't want to be put in a situation? Uh, I don't know if you know what we do. <laughs> yes, I know. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I just vibe with the song and I don't like break down the lyrics. And uh, I know you. You're always on You're always on the lyrics. So I, I was hoping that you would just tell me. Okay. Ooh. Well, how were you affected by the, the music? What was going I on just, there? I, I, it was, what was, you know, it was kind of repetitive and it didn't really have like a... Um, like anything crazy about it, but it had like a sort of familiar sound to it that made me feel like. <clears throat> it sounds like you're saying uh, it was I feel like generic. I was like, That's what it sounds well, like to me. Well, ge- well, no, well, kind of, but generic in the sense of I feel like I heard songs like this before, and I liked the vibe that went with them. That's so, almost literally the definition of generic. But I liked the vibe that went with them, and so. When the song was playing, I was just enjoying the feel of it. Uh huh. Even though, yes, it it didn't really like go a whole lot of places. Um. And the 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 part where the, it did the pre-chorus, I thought of you. And my father said when I was younger, "Hard times breed better, uh, better men," because you'll like sometimes I'm like thinking that a situation is so horrible or whatever, but you'll be like. People get stronger, you know what I mean, by situations and by, you know, whatever they have to go through as long as you, I don't know. So that just kind of like reminded me of something you would say to the kids if they were, you know, yeah, facing difficulties. Yeah. I mean, hard times. Uh... I don't think that they necessarily breed better men. I think that it depends on what you do with the situation. Yeah. If you allow it to make you bitter, forget about it. Once you, once you subscribe to bitterness then it's not working for you. If you let the situation work for you, then... Hard times hard times solidify clay. They don't change the comp- composition of the clay. Yeah. They solidify it. Yeah. So whatever, whatever you were before that heat comes, the hard time is going to exacerbate it and make it obvious. So hard times don't make for good men. They reveal good men. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also reveal bad men. So there's nothing about it's. It's kind of like people saying time heals all wounds. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't. Um, time doesn't do a damn thing for wounds. Um, engaging yeah. with the wounds, healing heals wounds, not time. It's the same thing with <laughs> being a good man or a bad man, right? Like mm-hmm. be, you know, hard times uh, expose good men for who they. I mean, we just saw that with the with the with the unfortunately with the school shooting situation where the cops stayed outside now people are trying to say all oh, those cops are racist because it was brown kids i completely reject that number one oh. the cops the, the the racial makeup of the cops is almost identical to the racial makeup of the kids in the school yeah. number two this happened in parkland where the where the cops stayed outside uh it happened in uh orlando where the cops stayed outside those hard times didn't make for good men uh, the hard times didn't make them cowards either. The hard times revealed exactly where they were. Mm-hmm. And I, I think what happens with people is that hard times are the great um, demystifier. People have an ideal self, and then there's the real self. Mm-hmm. So, like, right now, everybody's going after these cops saying blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, as if they would have done something different. And we know statistically, the stats are you probably wouldn't have done anything different. Those are the stats. Um, 
I'm supposed to get on here and say, I would have done something different. If I was those cops, I would have went in there, blah, 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 blah. Now, like I said, I've been in situations where, you know, my life is on the line and, you know, a person might say, oh, you did the right thing here, here, and here. But that doesn't mean I'd have done the right thing then. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, uh, sometimes people are fatigued from being in that situation over and over again. And I've seen it. The guy was great on op one, op two, completely froze up because he was done. So, um, that's why I'm such a big believer in self-awareness because, you know, we want to believe something about ourselves. We want to believe, especially men, men want to believe that, that they can always rise to the challenge. We have this ideal about ourselves that, yeah, I'm the king and I would, uh, (laughs) uh, and, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, a lot of life really is about matching your ideal self to be your real self, right? Yeah. Like in, in Christian parlance, it's called sanctification, right? In other words, Jesus, whatever you believe about Jesus, at least at minimum, Christians would say he is the best version of myself, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and the, the gap between Jesus and me, though, is is eternal. And so I'm trying to get to that to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, what's convenient in our religion is to say, well, you're never going to attain it. I have a built in excuse for all my failure. (laughs) Jesus is God. I'm not right. Um, so if you can really allow that thought to become part of you, I I just think men have to be taught how to lose. You you just have to be taught how to lose. You, you're not going to win all the time and you're not going to be the hero all the time. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's one of the things I'm loving so much about teaching the kids basketball. And I'm so happy that the girls want to do it as well. There's just so many lessons in sports. Sports is such a, it's, it's like a, it's like a tightrope with a safety net for life Mm -hmm. because sports is where you're taught that failure is okay. Sports is where you're taught that you have to fail in order to succeed. So like I talk to the girls and I say, girls, <laughs> and I don't treat the girls. You, you know, like you've seen it. Like I, yeah, I yell at them. They, I, they have to do their suicides. Like I push them to their limits, just like the boys. Um, but what's funny is what gets them emotional is not like the, um, the physical exertion. It's missing a shot. Yeah. And so I could tell the girls are, are because they're not as familiar with sports as the boys. They're yeah. like, Oh, I'm not. And I'm like, girls, Steph Curry is the greatest shooter of all time, and he's a 40% three-point shooter, mm-hmm. which means he misses six out of ten times. And then I get to tell the girls, we're not practicing until you make a mistake. Like, routinely being we're not able... practicing until you make a mistake. Until you make a mistake, you're not practicing. Oh, oh. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. if you're doing something that you're already good at, there's no reason to practice. you yeah. got to do something you're not good at that time. Yes. But, like, all these crazy lessons that I get to teach them, mm-hmm. and then they get to see, hey, wait a second. Yeah, I miss, but I'm missing a lot less frequently. And I'm, like, all those lessons, I'm so happy. Like, I- I'm getting so much traction with the girl and the boys on on handling failure. Uh, what happens when you're not the hero? Yeah. What happens when you miss the game-winning shot? What happens when you... You were wide open. I passed you the ball, but you weren't focusing. The ball went out of bounds, and now this kid went and scored on us, and we lost the game. How do you handle that? All those life lessons where you get to to teach your your kid in a in a safe environment. In mm-hmm. other words, what are the consequences? Right. You just lose. Yeah. But it, it's a it's a safety net mm-hmm. to where now you get into life, you can still apply those principles. Um. I just think that that's it's such important lessons to teach kids. So, yeah, hard times, yeah. hard times absolutely does not make for good men or women, for that matter. Um, uh, good men are revealed by hard times and bad men are revealed by hard times. And good women are are in, in, in the same situation. Um, so interesting. Go ahead. What were you? Well, I... I believe that and I've seen that now, but I didn't know that. Like I remember years ago, um, that I was like craving some difficulty in my life because the people that had been through difficulty 
It's so interesting. I literally wasn't looking at all people that have been through difficulty. I was looking at the people who had been through difficulty and made something of it. And so I mm-hmm. assumed that you make something of difficulty. And because I didn't look at all the people, then I assumed that difficulty brought the growth instead of realizing that it's it's what you put into it and, and what you're going to get out of it. And so I think that, you know, like difficulty came to me and I found myself getting angry, feeling bitter, getting, you know, like just sucked into the depression of it and the exhaustion of it and not, not letting it work for me. And that's, and then, then you're very disappointed because it's like, so all this difficulty and all it did was make me a shitty person. Like, (laughs) that's not what I bargained for, you know? Yeah. And and I guess, you know, like sometimes I think to myself, well, long, long term, long run, you know, when I'm in my fifties, I'm going to have a lot that I'll be able to give to somebody in their thirties. Yes. But, um, but that's not necessarily true. If you, if you, if you don't apply the, and do the work necessary to, to let the situation work for you, it can always just bring more. Yeah. That's just so interesting because I guess I, I did have the idea before that, you know, time heals all wounds. And he, you told one of our kids that the other day, and it was like, I already knew that from our past conversations and knowing it's true. Time doesn't heal wounds. Yeah. Like people working on stuff, that's what heals it. And so we were talking to one of our kids that's more of an idealist. And, um, you were like, that's untrue. Time doesn't heal all wounds. We yeah. have to work. And like, I don't know why, but like there was, it was so cute and funny and, and sad watching the the reaction because he, it was like, he went through a bunch of like emotion, like, ah, realizing, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Now what are we supposed to do? These ridiculous BS phrases that people just throw out that it doesn't help anyone. Right. Doesn't help anyone. Uh, I'm sorry, but you know. My uh, mother-in-law died in 2012, and uh, I feel worse about it now than when it happened. Mm. Like, it's just... Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do believe that God is going to heal me of that partially. I don't think that there's ever going to be a time when, you know, I don't blame myself or whatever. And I have a different relationship to blame than most people. Um, it's not like I'm going to jump off of a mountain blame, but it's just, there were signs and you missed them and they were very, very obvious, dude. Um, but, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't stand when I hear the kids or a- anybody that I love close to me, just spouting off these meaningless phrases and, you know, evangelicalism is tons of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, but in this particular song, what's fascinating is it looks to me like this guy his dad wasn't really functioning as a guide as much as he was functioning as I think this guy's interpreting it as the dad was trying to stifle his dreams Mm -hmm. Um, you took my dreams but not my name you'll follow me until the end I am my kingdom and then later on he basically says I'm the king now bow down to me Mm -hmm. so it looks like it was one of those situations where typical conflict the kid has stars in his eyes he wants to be a rock star or in this case a wrestler or whatever it is but the dad is probably is crushing his dreams Mm -hmm. which of course the dad is probably going to say no it's just that you have an impractical dream and you have to live in the world Mm -hmm. like yeah yeah like (laughs) sailor's like grandparents they ask her what she wants to do and she's like well i want to be a youtuber and they laughed at her and and they kind of like they're like nobody can make a nobody makes a living off youtube well it's true only one percent of YouTubers. They don't know what we do. They don't for know a what job. We, so they Sarah was looking they, at them like they don't know what we do. But it's true. Only <laughs> we just got done a discussion with a YouTuber mm-hmm. that gets probably no exaggeration ten to twenty times more views than us. And she was ta- she was talking about another group of YouTubers who literally have a million subscribers, mm-hmm. and they were putting their heads together trying to figure out a way to make money on the on on the channel. Like, yeah. so yeah. making unfortunate situation generating capital on YouTube is extremely difficult. Yeah, for sure. And so 
I understand why they would just like laugh her off and wave her off. I understand that. And I think they're thinking in her best interest, right? Like they're looking at things in like in her best interest. Yeah. Like, come on, nobody, nobody, nobody really makes any money on YouTube. Right. Um, yeah. And so they're looking at it like, hey, I'm just trying to be realistic with you. The kid's looking at it like, you're trying to destroy my life. Mm -hmm. You're trying to destroy my dream because I put everything into this. Right? Like, mm -hmm. people put everything into this. And so, it looks like that's where the conflict is between him and his dad. Um, he's saying, no, I'm going to be a rock star. I'm going to live my dream. The dad, it looks like the dad was saying, come on, man, be reasonable. Yep. And there was that conflict, but the kid ended up winning because obviously he's in a band with a song and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ha, I'm the king now. Bow down. I beat you. Um, and, you know, I, I, I guess oh. you did. Okay. But as a dad, it's it's so funny. Like now when you become a dad, now home. you understand, right? Okay. Like, um, look, th these are situations that your kid wants to be a basketball star. Only one percent of these kids make it to basketball. Same thing with football. Yeah. Same thing yeah. with YouTube. It it the the numbers are completely stacked against you. So right. what are you gonna do as a parent? And you're thinking about your child's future. Obviously, you're gonna say it that way. But unfortunately. You know, kids and parents, all that shit gets lost in translation. You know what I'm saying? What I tell the kids is, if you completely dedicate yourself to something, and I see you're completely dedicated to it, I believe that you can make it. If you don't, you won't. So, for example, the kids were talking about football. We're talking about moving to Florida, and they're like, oh, yeah, we can join a Florida football team. I was like, you're out of your fucking mind. Mm -hmm. Like, the SEC, the Southeastern Conference, like, that's the pipeline for the NFL. Mm -hmm. You guys are nowhere close to, mm -hmm. to being able to compete with kids in Florida at sports. Yeah. They do this shit year-round as a religion. You guys do it whenever, you know, that's because I want to be as real with them as possible. No, I don't believe you'd make the team. No, you wouldn't. Then I say, but if you completely and totally dedicate yourself to the craft and you're maniacal about it, you absolutely will. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm trying as best as I can to be practical and honest prepare them for the real world while at the same time encouraging their ideals mm -hmm. and giving them a, a a point to say hey if i'm truly and totally dedicated to this dad will support me so like i'm working with getting zoe a publisher why because she's fucking th 14 15 years old and she's on her third full book mm -hmm. like Full book, start to finish. Mm -hmm. Nobody helped her. Mm -hmm. She just wrote, wrote, wrote. And I'm talking about these are these are novel. I mean, she looks at how many words per chapter. Yep. I mean, she does deep research into it. So yeah, I'm yep. gonna spend the money. I'm gonna get a good publisher and editor for her because mm -hmm. she's Absolutely. grinding. Absolutely. Right now, only one percent of these authors are gonna be successful. Do I think she is? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she's doing shit that 15 year olds don't do right 15 year olds are not on their right. third book and now they're writing a, a a sitcom manuscript nobody pressured her to do that that was her passion whether she's in school or on her free time she's working 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 Abs on that shit yeah, absolutely okay that's something where i go she's gonna make it that's yep. what that's when as a parent you line up behind that kid and you go oh, now absolutely. obviously as a homeschool family they have those opportunities that other kids don't. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But that's not her fault. It is what it is, mm -hmm. right? So that's the way I've tried to balance it is I've tried to say if the kid is going to put in the work, the maniacal amount of work to be a one percenter, mm -hmm. then I'm going to completely get behind them and like let, write that mythology and write, be mm -hmm. right there with them and make them believe that there's nobody on this fucking planet that can write like you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't show that, then I'm going to be a regular practical parent. And that's the best I can come up with as a balance. What do you got? Uh, okay, so I'm going to give the song a 8.3. <laughs> I never pick favorites, but Johan is my favorite. <laughs> He's doing really good. Like, you guys are probably, I saw somebody else asking, like, how's, how's little homie doing? He's doing really good. Like, he he was always in trouble, like, like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, when we first launched the channel. Yeah, he was always, like, into something. There was always something going on. It's not like that anymore now. He's really, like, I think he's, he's growing up a little bit, and uh, he's matured a lot, and he has a lot of insight. I think part of the problem, uh, which I didn't realize then that I do now, is that... Um, 
he wasn't, I wasn't good at listening to him. So probably like a year and a half ago, um, I really started trying to put in the effort to like stop and listen to what he was saying because he would talk so fast and it was going to, I just wasn't a good listener. And so I, I started really stopping and listening and that, um, I felt like that made a big change in things because he felt like he was being heard. Honestly, what happened was I realized his, his mom wasn't really listening and I wasn't really listening. And I said, that's just too many people not really listening. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, really put it in the effort. And, and he, ha he's so full of insight. Like if you, well, the, the videos aren't there anymore, but we had videos where he was like talking about certain subjects and people were blown away. They were like, he should do little Ted talks. You oh, know? Yeah. He's yeah. always just been, you know, wise beyond his years. If you, if you take the time to stop and listen. So, um, you know, and he made, he made conscious decisions himself. It was just, you know, he was like, well, you know what? I don't, I don't need to break shit anymore or whatever he was doing you know he just made that decision and and uh he, he's had a real turnaround i thought yeah it's uh it, it, it i love being a parent i love uh, i love being a dad um because it's so challenging like what you, there's so much balance that you have to strike and there's so much nuance and each kid is different um so you cannot parent them all the same you can't you have to parent them equitably but you cannot parent them identically mm -hmm. and so there's so many um pitfalls you can fall into as a parent and i'm sure i've made a million mistakes about it um but there we go so it looks like this guy this guy's dad they didn't get to figure that out mm -hmm. uh at least by the time of this song but maybe things will change mm -hmm. once the guy has kids himself who knows yeah. what yeah. do you get the song i gave it an 8.3 I gave it a solid 8.8. .8. I thought it was very, very, very true to life. A little bit repetitive, I agree with you, but I yeah. thought that the there was a lot of uh, meat in what he was saying, obviously. There you are, dear listeners. Stay where you are. We are nowhere close to being done. We are in a mega stream from the big homie DJ Nick. Nick, 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 Nick. <laughs> We're coming right back to you with another joint. Finn, out. Sorry, out. Gone.